So in this video, what I'm going to talk about is how to improve your scores on UWorld. The UWorld is the number one prep material out there for the USMLE preparation. So before I go into this video, kindly take some time to subscribe to this video and share the information with other people who might need it. Also like and comment on this video. Tell me what you think about what the points I'm making on this video and tell me what you have also done to improve your scores on UWorld. So before we go into the details of this video, first of all, you have to understand how UWorld sets the questions, how to use the UWorld. Before you start using the UWorld, you have to have an idea about what you are looking for. So UWorld, this is how they do the questions. They set the questions in a way as to help you understand the details of every topic that the set questions are. Now, when you do UWorld efficiently, you are likely to improve your scores on UWorld first. All the assessments, your NBMEs and your STEP scores are likely to improve. They will improve if you do it well, not likely. They will definitely improve if you do the UWorld well. Now, UWorld is a study material. It's not an assessment tool. The assessment tools are the UWorld SA1 and then the UWorld SA2. These are the assessment tools. But the UWorld QBank itself, right now it's about 4,000 questions. And these ones are the learning tools. So basically what UWorld does is that they, when they set the questions, you know when you do the question, you will choose the wrong one. It's not because... When you choose the wrong answers, it's not because you do not have an idea about a topic. You have an, you have the idea about a topic, but you world wants you to know that you there's something more that you, you need to add to your knowledge. Maybe you have 30% knowledge, maybe you have 40% knowledge, maybe you have 90% knowledge, but there is this one thing that if you add to your knowledge, then your your understanding of the topic will be will be hundred percent and you'll be able to pass the exam or you'll be able to get that question correct so this is how you all does it now there's another thing that they do is called the differential diagnosis so that's 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 what i call it it's called a differential diagnosis method so that let's say you all is asking you a question about maybe uh, someone having pyelonephritis right and then we want to know the cause of it now that pyelonephritis it can be caused by many things it could, if it's in a child it could be caused by posterior urethral valve if it's not adult it could be caused by maybe uh, pro uh, prostatic enlargement so we have to understand how to differentiate between the two so anytime you are doing you all you want to compare the conditions okay when they are talking about this age about the same condition how is the presentation if you are talking about an adult a child how is the presentation like now if they're talking about the same thing in different scenarios how is the presentation like that's how you want to approach it and anytime you get a question wrong on you world what you want to do is do not just memorize the answer to the question now compare your answer since you were not stupid when you chose your answer unless you you know nothing about the topic but if you chose an answer that made sense to you and you world is telling you that it is a different answer Compare those two answers and see the reason why you all says your answer is wrong. Then, in, in that case, in the future, you may not choose your answer again. In that case, in the future, maybe you add something from you all to what you knew already. Then, you, you improve your knowledge. That is how to approach you all. And this is called the differential diagnosis method. Another thing is that when you are doing you all, you want to read everything. You want to read all the answers that were wrong. But on reading all the answers that are wrong, you want to pay attention to two main answers. That is two things that are easily comparable. Two things that are similar. So if you all talks about things that are similar, you want to take very important note of the of those two things that are similar and can confuse you because in the exam you uh, in the exam the nbme is not going to ask exactly what you would ask you but they may ask what what it's in the 
incorrect answers or they may ask something that is closer to you world also when you are doing you world and you know anything that is similar to what you world is talking about quickly go and look at it. it shouldn't necessarily be something that is in the U world q bank but if you just know something that oh it's similar to this but it's confusing go and look at it and compare the two just to make sure that next time you are able to differentiate between the two so this is very important pay attention to the ages the presentation and compare any two similar things very very important so if you look at my notes what i do is that every note that i take i write verses I, I write this versus this this versus this so all the conditions in my notes i write verses and that is what i do to improve my score so that next time i don't miss it next is to make sure that you remember the concepts concepts are very important they form about about 40 percent of the usmla exam so just understanding the concept and what the question is going after is something that you should pay attention to and always make sure that you memorize the concept understand and remember the concept that they are going after and that would help you because the scenarios are almost always the same some conditions cannot present in any different way if you're talking about appendicitis the same way it presents in someone is the same way it's going to present all over the world unless maybe the situation is different whereby the person's organs are um, uh, uh, dislocated or, or they, they, they tend to the other side or maybe if the person is pregnant then you are looking at appendicitis in the epigastrum but if 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 it's a normal person then you are looking at it in the right lower quadrant but if it's in uh, someone whose intestines did not rotate then it, you can look at it in the in the left lower quadrant so these are some of the things that you should you should look at and now the next thing is that you world is also such that you don't just rush through it take your time to do the you world well since it's a learning tool take you world and then anytime you world talks about a topic that you think is of interest i mean any topic and for example if they are listing let's say they give you a question and the patient has been on NSAID and he's having something like he's having a urinary problem and there is blood in the urine that we are thinking of renal papillary necrosis but then you would tell you it is due to NSAID now you want to go into the first aid and look at other courses because when you look at other courses it will help you to know the topic completely you all may ask you about NSAID causes of NSAID as a cause of uh, intest, renal intest, uh, papillary necrosis or something and but then when you go into the exam the exam may talk about sickle cell but then you, if you all did not talk about sickle cell doesn't mean that you should limit your knowledge to what you all is asking you should go into the first aid and look at what first aid is also talking about that same topic so that you add all the knowledge and if there's a mnemonic try to memorize that mnemonic as soon as possible and implement the mnemonic in your studies so that you can always remember it now when you are talking about mnemonics what you want to do is that anytime you see the mnemonic recite it and repeat it and say it and apply it in your studies so that on the exam day you can easily recall and then when you do the mnemonics for a very long time it gets to a point where you don't need to even recall it will just come by itself so this is something that i want to talk about because some people have been asking me oh i've done you all my third time and my scores are still not improving pay attention to the differential diagnosis and then you will always get the answer correct so thanks for watching this video kindly subscribe kindly like kindly subscribe so you can push me to uh, 2000 subscribers i'm almost there and i need more subscribers so that uh, my videos can go fine i can help more people thank you for watching this video if you have any comment about this video if you have anything to add to this video please the comment section is there and i'll always pin the best comment as the first comment thank you and have a wonderful um, study period and prep for your exam bye